Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Leah. I, I see there's some Minnesota Vikings fans in the back there. <laughs> um, who let them in? <laughs> hey, look, I give you greetings from Packerland. I represent the, yay, all right, hey, we got a few guys. Uh, I represent the first congressional district of Wisconsin, uh, which is basically the Illinois border. So I live in Janesville, that's where I'm from, but I represent, uh, you might have heard of a little place called Lake Geneva, uh, Delavan Lake, uh, Kenosha, Racine, Milwaukee suburbs, that's where I hail from. So it's nice to come down south, we come here all the time. Look, I gotta tell you, even though I'm a big Green Bay Packer fan, I grew up watching WGM and I'm a big Cubby fan. So. I, I know I just insulted like half the room now, all the White Sox people, right? So I'm not batting too well here. Look, I, the reason I wanted to come down uh, and do whatever I could to lend a hand to Joel is because we need new people in Congress to help us take this thing back. It, there's basically two kinds of people in politics in both parties. There's beers and there's doers. Beers are people who want to be powerful, who want to be somebody, be a congressman or whatever that means. And then there's doers, people who believe in ideas, believe in principles, and most importantly, have the courage of their convictions to act on those principles. And that's why they go, we need more doers. We need pe more people like Joel Pollack in Congress. <clears throat> The basic thing I want to leave with you today is we've got a big choice to make. We have a big choice to make in this country as to who we are and what we want to be. And that choice is going to be made in 2010 and yes, in 2012. Now, what is that choice? Well, let's think about what America is in the first place. America is the most exceptional nation on the face of the earth because of the idea of America. What's the idea of America? In this nation, we were founded on the idea that our rights come from nature and from God, not from government. That's very unique. And in recognition of that noble idea, we have built this country based on those principles, liberty, freedom, free enterprise, self-determination, government by consent of the governed. And I've got to tell you one thing, the government we've got right now, it's not doing it with the consent of the governed. This is a government that's going off its hinges. I've, if you take a look at the choice we had before us, it is basically this. Either we can reclaim those principles that built this country, apply those ideas to the problems of the day, and reclaim this country and go forward with that opportunity society with the safety net, or we can abandon the American idea, and we can trade it in for a European-style, cradle-to-grave social welfare state, where we will take the safety net we have built and made reliable and turn it into a hammock that lulls able-bodied people into lives of complacency, that drains them of their incentive and their will to make the most of their lives. That is not who we are. You know, the Tax Foundation is a think tank. I like to read a lot of their stuff. They're, they're, they're great reputation, nonpartisan. They came up with some pretty recent scary statistics. 20% of Americans get 75% of their income from the federal government, so they're already dependent. Another 20% of Americans get 40% of their income from the federal government, so they're reliant. A full 60% of Americans, according to the Tax Foundation, get more benefits from the federal government in dollar terms than they pay back in taxes. So we're reaching a tipping point in this country where we're gonna have more takers than makers. Well, what is the goal of our government? Is it to treat poverty? Or is it to eradicate poverty through upward mobility, through equal opportunity, through prosperity, through entrepreneurship, or through free enterprise? <clears throat> that is a choice before us. And why is the choice so fast and so furious? It's because of what is behind this tipping point is the explosion of our national debt. It is the fact that these very important social insurance strategies of the 20th century are coming due and they're going to bankrupt us in the 21st century. And the good news is, and the reason I wrote this roadmap, which I see is on your chairs, is not to say I got it all figured out and here's all the only ideas. 
It is to say that America, it is not too late to fix these problems. It is not too late to turn the corner and fulfill the mission of these programs, health and retirement security, while paying off our national debt and giving us with a high standard of living, making the next generation better off. Uh, my wife, Jana, and I live in Janesville. We're 40 years old. Um, our kids, uh, Liza, Sam, and Charlie, are five, seven, and eight years old. Um, for the last 40 years, government has been about the same in size. 20 cents out of every dollar has gone from the federal, has gone from every dollar made in America to pay for the federal government. So we've taken 20 cents out of the dollar made in America to pay for the federal government. When my kids are my age, we'll have to take 40 cents out of every dollar just to pay for the government at that time. That's before Obamacare. That's before the tear that this last administration went on. And so what is government doing right now? They're doubling down in this other direction. They've created two new health care entitlements. They're trying to overtake the energy sec sector. You can see what their foreign policy is doing. And so what we have here is a government that has chosen this alternative path. They have chosen already to abandon the American idea and take us down this welfare state path. And the great thing about this country is we can undo those choices. And the point I'm trying to make here is it is not too late. It is not too late to fix these problems, pay off this debt, and yes, reverse this slide we are on and leave this, next, this country more prosperous and give our kids a more higher standard of living. Now here's the deal. What is it going to take? It is going to take a center-right coalition in this country to do this. It's going to take Republicans, independents, and yes, Democrats to come together to fix this mess. Because 70% of Americans want the American idea. Only 30%, according to most surveys, actually want the cradle of the grave welfare state. And if you want to see how that ends, all you got to do is turn on the TV and take a look at Europe. Because eventually you run out of other people's money to spend. Cradle of the grave, social welfare states simply do not work, not only morally, but economically. We still believe in that opportunity society. We believe we should help people who cannot help themselves, help people who are temporarily down on their luck, but we want to have a society that rewards, that puts a premium on work, on achieving, on risk-taking, on entrepreneurship, on investing. These are things we should not be demagoguing. You can't love jobs while hating the people who create them. <clears throat> and so my point is simply this. We need new people in Congress. We're out recruiting people like Joel to run for Congress. We don't care if you're gay or straight. We don't care if you're Christian, Jewish, Muslim, atheist, Irish, Italian, African American, Latino. You can even be a Minnesota Vikings fan for all we care about. <laughs> if you believe in those principles that built this country, free enterprise, limited government, liberty, freedom, government by consent of the governed, self-determination, if you want us to keep this American idea, this opportunity with a safety net, and prevent us from slotting down this path of managed decline of statism, we want you to help us. We need you to help us. This is all of us helping each other to take this country back. And the best thing you can do is give us Joel Pollack and send him to Congress this November. <laughs> you know, I grew up just north of the border. This has not always been a, seat, a, a state that always sends just mindlessly Democrats to Congress. Just ask Mark Kirk. Just ask Peter Roskam. This is a state that is competitive. This is a state that thinks about its elected officials and can change course. You're going to prove that this fall. And I got to tell you, Illinois is a very, very important state. There are so many congressional races here, Senate races here. You have a gubernatorial race that are very, very important to holding the keys to fixing these problems we have, not only in our states, but in our country. And I want to simply say thank you to all of you for what you've done to help Joel. I want to thank you for coming here, for helping him financially. But more importantly, I want to thank you for what you are about to do, which is to do more. We need you to do everything you can to get the word out, to donate again, to help with everything that this campaign needs to become successful. Because 
we've got to leave everything on the field. We've got to run through the tape. So I just want to thank you for coming out and helping. And let's hear it for the man who is going to take back this congressional district, Joel Pollock. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.